the Institute of Christ the King, our community of priests, oblate brothers, and religious sisters is serving in 12 countries around the world and 19 dioceses coast to coast across the United States. Um, St. Francis de Sales, our patron saint, uh, we will be bringing you his spirituality today uh, through the various reflections. And if you find spiritual nourishment in the message which will be given today, I encourage you to visit our website, institute-christ-king.org, and there's a, a link to our podcast page through our website, and that podcast page has many sermons and spiritual talks um, from our priests across the country for your spiritual benefit. May God bless you, and thank you for all of your prayers for our community as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Restore in me, O Lord, the joy of thy salvation. These words of contrition from King David in the famous psalm, Miserere, they describe the priestly life of St. John Eudes, whose feast we celebrate here today. And once again, I encourage you to read along in the booklets which have been provided the English translation of the Latin prayers for this feast day's Holy Mass. St. John Eudes was a French priest who lived in the 1600s. He preached many parish missions far and wide. And he was very well known as an effective priest in the confessional. His gracious words, his attractive manner as a confessor embodied the sacred heart of Jesus to so many sinners. St. John Eudes liberated many poor souls from the sinful habits which had enslaved them. And he helped them to rediscover the joy of friendship with Christ through sanctifying grace. And so today, let's honestly ask ourselves if we truly appreciate this joy of a forgiven heart. Do we make good use of the sacrament of penance? that most wonderful gift given to us by the love of the most sacred heart of Jesus. Some people claim that they do not need a priest for confession since they can speak their sins directly to God. However, these same good people, most surely, will go to the doctor when they are sick, and they will tell the doctor all of their ills, and they will get the prescribed medication they need for healing. Well, these same people want reassurance from the doctor that they are taking the necessary steps to be healed and to stop the illness from spreading to make things worse. Well, the priest, since apostolic times, the priest has been seen as a spiritual doctor, a spiritual doctor through which Jesus Christ heals our souls of the sickness of sin. Indeed, Christ told his apostles to act as his representatives when, after his resurrection, he breathed on the apostles and he said, Receive the Holy Ghost. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And so, confessing our sins to the priest, the ordained minister, ordained by the bishop, the bishop being the successor of the apostles, Confess to a priest is to confess to Jesus himself. So when we kneel in the confessional, faith tells us that we kneel before Christ crucified on Calvary. And his most precious blood cleanses our souls. And our souls become spotless and white, like on the day of our baptism. So we should never be afraid of coming to confession. Certainly there is a little a little humiliation on our part, but it's for our good. It's good medicine for our human pride. And this little feeling of shame is nothing compared to the horrible sufferings of the damned in hell. This little feeling of, humili of humiliation and confession, it's nothing compared to the great happiness of heaven. Dear friends, there's nothing more consoling than a good and sincere confession. Sometimes we might have a little sense of fear beforehand, 
But after having sincerely owned up to our faults in confession, we say to ourselves afterwards, well, that wasn't so bad, and why was I so afraid? The more sincere we are, the better the confessor can give us advice to overcome temptation and difficulties. Remember, the priest is there to help us, and he can even ask us questions um, if we might need some help. Maybe it's been a long time for us. Well, don't worry. The priest will help us take care of everything. All you have to do is prepare yourself the best that you can and show up, and he will help you the rest of the way. Remember that the priest receives special graces to have a great compassion for those who come to confession. And the priest never thinks less of people. No, because the priest himself gets down on his knees and he goes to confession to another priest. And because the priest is called to a special perfection and he can't give to others that which he does not have himself, well, then a priest goes to confession even more often than most lay people because the priest has to be the first to practice what he preaches. Now, when you go to the doctor, you don't question his or her own health. It may be that your doctor has illnesses or unhealthy conditions of his own, but that does not prevent your doctor from helping you back to good health. So no matter what his or her health may be, the doctor is still able to give you the remedies and the knowledge you need to get your own health back to where it needs to be. Right? Your dentist might have a toothache, but that does not prevent he or she from healing you of your toothache. And actually, the experience of your dentist's own toothache, that might even help your dentist to more effectively treat your own toothache. Indeed, because the priest himself is a sinner who has to overcome his own temptations, well, the priest gains knowledge and experience which may be beneficial to you. And this is what the letter to the Hebrews tells us in chapter 5. Quote, Every high priest taken among men is ordained for men in the things that pertain to God, that he may offer up gifts and sacrifices for sins. He, the priest, can have compassion on those who are ignorant and who err, because he himself has his own infirmity, and therefore he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, make offerings for sins. Words from the letter to the Hebrews about the priest. So the fact that the priest himself is a sinner actually makes him a better confessor for you. As long, of course, as the priest is doing his best to live up to the priestly ideal. And you know, the priest hears lots and lots of confessions. He doesn't remember who came to confession or what he heard. When he leaves that confessional and he shuts the door, well, he's very happy to just leave inside there all of those unpleasant things. It's a great joy for a priest to welcome souls to confession because he gets to see firsthand the beauty of God's grace at work. And that is very edifying and inspirational for the priest himself. He has great respect and profound esteem for those who have the courage and the humility to come to confession. And the priest is very happy to serve the penitents in this way. And so, my friends, we should never hesitate to approach the confessional with great confidence in God's mercy and even with a certain joy. Yes, we should be joyful in going to confession because Jesus himself welcomes us back to his friendship with open arms and he restores to us the joy of his salvation. So never let, let us never allow our pride to keep us away from the confessional when there's such good spiritual medicine right there at our fingertips. Now, I've heard it said, I don't need confession. I don't lie. I don't cheat. I don't steal. So confession is for other people. It's, it's not for me because, well, I haven't killed anybody. <laughs> well, think about it. If it's true that we clean the filter of the air conditioner to keep it functioning, 
if it's true that we clean out the faucet in our sink because calcium and dirt buildup affects the volume and the purity of the water. If we pull out of our vegetable garden even small and medium-sized weeds before those weeds get really big and they go to seed, thus producing more and more bad weeds, well then, shouldn't we confess even our venial or less serious sins? Shouldn't we confess our impatience, our bad words, our laziness in prayer, etc.? Indeed, confession purifies our soul. Confession obtains the grace we need to break those bad habits and to avoid falling into the same sins again. You know, if we go to the dentist for our teeth cleaning more frequently than we go to confession, well, won't our seemingly small faults grow and grow so as to cause plaque and decay in more and more of our thoughts, words, and actions? That will build up without us even realizing it. And so we need that experience of coming face to face with who we truly are and not with the illusions that we like to make ourselves to be. Confession is an antidote to those self-centered illusions. Confession brings us face to face with the truth of who we are. Without regular and sincere confession, even the little chains of sin which now bind us will one day bind our children. The young generations will grow up to be like us, and our chains today will become their chains. And what might seem like a little fault in us can become magnified in our young people in the days of tomorrow. Our children need holy fathers and mothers. The children deserve holy grandparents, holy aunts and uncles. Children are great imitators, so let us give them something great to imitate. For God's sake, for our own sake, and for the sake of our children and their future, let us be regular in getting to confession at least once a month. And let us not put off going more frequently if we happen to lose the friendship of God by mortal sin. In this case of deliberate mortal sin in our soul, we must make a sincere confession before receiving Holy Communion. Indeed, if our body had a health emergency, we would call 911, and the ambulance would come with its sirens to make a top priority to get you to the hospital in good time because you're having a health emergency and you need help from the doctor right away. Well, then why is it that when our soul has fallen into deadly sin, why are we so slow to make it to confession? Why do we so easily procrastinate? Let us indeed make our best effort, and we will see that God's grace will help and sustain us. Never be afraid to ask for the help you need, and the more you ask for it, the more graces will come to you in abundance through the sacrament of penance. Let's be careful also to avoid the opposite extreme of scrupulosity. Scrupulosity is a self-centered weakness of seeing sin where there is none. Kind of like a hypochondriac with his health always sees every little thing as a possible sickness. The scrupulous, with good intentions, they often confuse sin with temptation or human imperfection. The scrupulous must not think out of fear, no, but they should rather act with confidence in the divine power of God to guide their conscience and to ask the priest for fatherly guidance so that they can learn to grow out of that habit. And so, dear friends, on this feast of St. John Eudes, may the example and the prayers of this great priest confessor help us all to have deeper confidence in the merciful love of the most sacred heart of Jesus for us. Confession is not merely looking at ourselves in the mirror, no. But confession means looking more and more at the sacred heart of Jesus. And the more we look at Christ, the more we will be able to see ourselves as we truly are in the sight of God. So let us be grateful for the gift of forgiveness and the sacrament of confession here on earth so that we can be forever happy in heaven and the great family of God 
with St. John Hughes, with all the angels and the saints, with all of our ancestors who have gone before us in the faith, as together, with unending joy, we praise God, the Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, to whom be honor, glory, and thanksgiving forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Thank you.